Hey guys, you know how I do these puzzle A to Z's now to explain uh, how to go from nothing to a full puzzle? Well, today I'm gonna go crescendo. I'm gonna make something slightly more difficult than what I did last time, and it's gonna be a triangular domino. So yeah, this series is basically, I mean, the, the, the point of this series is to show you uh, how to design. If you want to see just how to do it yourself, I highly recommend that you slow down the video, or at least that you, you pause the video from time to time to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to explain it, but not too much. So um, right now I'm doing a triangle that's 80 uh, in length, because it's going to be, a, it's basically like a 3x3x2, three by three by so you want to have a 3 to 2 ratio on the faces. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cutting plane uh, that is perpendicular to... See, if I, if I draw here, I'm going to cut like that. So I, I, want it to, uh, I want it to be drawn on that side of the puzzle. So what I'm going to do is create circles. Now this is the origin of the puzzle. Uh, the mechanism should never go further than this point here. So you gotta like start at the center and do a tangency with the, the outermost edge. And then I'm gonna keep myself a margin. I'm gonna create concentric circles for this just to to get an idea of um, of how far I can go with the cuts. Now I want a two millimeter, actually more. Uh, let's say four millimeter margin. That's so I can put the screw head. Uh, then I'm gonna use say two millimeters for the mechanism and another two millimeters here. Now, uh, I have i haven't done this before uh, on my A to Z's because obviously I've just started. Last time I did just your basic, you know, spindle like, um, like this, uh, where you just have um, this shape right here that revolves around an axis like this one. And uh, this is what gets your, your rotation going. Now we're still gonna have some of those here, but we're also gonna, um, you know, mix that with a, with a spherical mechanism. So, um, so here, uh, I'm gonna cut the puzzle that way, okay? Um, and I want to leave some space for a center. So this needs to be less than 80 thirds, because uh, the problem is that if it's 80 thirds, it's gonna go through the origin, and you're gonna get a face pattern that looks something a little bit like this. Uh, let me just see if I can show you that. And um, obviously it's not what I want. Um, Okay, so I want a center on the puzzle. I want this to be a real uh, domino type puzzle. And if I uh, use uh, 80 thirds, I'm gonna have this face pattern, so I'm not gonna have a center, and a center is what I want. So uh, let's go back to the sketch that I was making. And um, so I'm gonna use less, say 20 millimeters. I think that should probably do it. And to make more space for the, the centers, I'm gonna make a V mechanism. Uh, it's basically, instead of creating a hook to hook the piece into the center, you create a hook that goes backwards and then inwards again. Uh, what that does is leaves more space for the screw inside the center and uh, more stability because there's a, a larger uh, rim right there, a larger um, space for the piece to hold on to because it gives more space for this little arc right there and this is what's going to hook this piece into the center. All right, so now let's go back to the, the center of my axis. Um, this is where the, the, the surface sorry, is gonna be revolved, right there. Uh, and it's gonna revolve around this axis because this is the axis of rotation of the puzzle. Now, uh, something I need to be sure of is that this is large enough for a screw, so I'm gonna put three millimeters, and as you can see, this hook right there is way too small, so I'm going to make it longer. I can choose to make it as long as I want, thanks to the V mechanism. So I'm going to make it uh, four millimeters. Uh, I don't trust FDM enough to put less, so uh, so let's do four millimeters. That should be fine. Uh, now um, I am going to add one little thing that I forgot. Uh, I actually linked this arc to this uh, axis right there. Uh, that is not what I want because the thing is I'm gonna add a little bit of a mechanism to hold the, the you know, well, it's a, it's a two-layered pu two layered puzzle so there's no center uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing as last time. I'm gonna put like this uh, little spindle right there. That's what I want, but I don't know why it's bugging. 
there's something that the, the CAD uh, design didn't understand. Sometimes it's over constrained, so it, the, the software doesn't understand exactly what it should prioritize. Um, anyways, so this is this seems like a relatively big uh, spindle, so I guess that should do it. Uh, now I'm gonna put a certain thickness to that spindle. I'm, getting, I'm not gonna put tolerances yet. It's not necessary at this point of the design. Uh, I'm gonna make this thicker, and this. Um, actually, this isn't what's important. What's important is this one. And that one's going to be three millimeters, just like on the one by two by three. Now, as you can see, this sketch kind of looks weird, but it's just because here you've got uh, rotation uh, and you've got one hook going in there, but you also need a hook going in there to keep the, this piece from just popping out in that direction, in this direction right there. Because if this hook wasn't here, the piece would just pop out that way. Anyways, uh, that was my terrible arrow sketch. Uh, so now I'm gonna revolve that surface, and you're gonna see what I meant by that. Um, see, th the whole thing is only uh, held together by. Okay, let's let's cut this and see it more clearly. The whole uh, section on this side is held together only by this little ridge. So obviously, it could just pop out using a little bit of force, which is why we have this thing right there. Uh, all right, so now that we have our cutting plane, what we can do is repeat it three times around the center and uh, around this axis, which is the intersection of these two planes right there. And we can repeat that three times by clicking on the plane. Now, I don't really like the proportions because the center is very small, so I'm gonna change that. Um, and I'm gonna put, say, sorry, over there, 15 millimeters, right there. And I'm gonna increase that to four uh, to give me some more space for the screw and increase that to five to have a bitter, bigger hook. And that's just bonus for me, so, so that's good. Uh, that looks much better. Uh, I think the center is a bit too big now, so I can adjust again. I'm gonna put 17. Hopefully that should do it. I like it. I like it. Um, the center is. I want it to be relatively proportional to the corners because they look kind of good. So this. All right. Where's the other? Oh, it's hard to see here. Okay. Uh, something along those lines. So this is 19 millimeters. Oh, Nathan would be proud. Okay. And this is 21 millimeters. So it needs to be slightly deeper cut. I'm gonna put 17.5 and I think that should do the trick. So 17.5 and now it's gonna be about 20 millimeters everywhere. Uh, yeah, that, that looks kinda good, I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that useless sketch that I just made and what I'm gonna do now is cut the puzzle. Now this is a two layered puzzle so this plane is just gonna cut it in half and that's all that's necessary. Uh, as for the rest of the planes, well, I'm just going to select them uh, and trim the the body, this body right there, right there, with the surfaces that I created. And now I just need to keep all of those uh, cases, well, all, all of those uh, check boxes checked. All right, nice. And I can hide the surface bodies. So what's left is a piece that will get hooked into the center and still remain in place because of that spindle right there. And the core looks a little something like this. Uh, obviously, this is overkill, and I'm noticing something here. The corner is cut off. If you see something that goes this far, it's, it means the corner was cut off, so you can see that if the corner is like that, it's because it doesn't have a mechanism. So I need to fix that first before I go anywhere else. Uh, that's because this was too far out. So if I put three millimeters, now there's going to be much more space for the mechanism, but that means my split function didn't understand the same things and there are probably going to be some boxes that are unchecked. Actually, I think I got lucky. Um, or maybe I should try to re-split it just to be sure. Aha! Uh -huh. There's plenty of bodies that, it, that weren't uh, cut the same way, I think. Anyways, uh, let's just, you know, in case. So if we look at the corner now, you're going to see that there is a mechanism and that is what we were looking for. Um, that's because now, if you isolate the, the 
the surfaces. You can see that they do have the mechanism here for the corner. Earlier they were so uh, deep that here it was cut off, like this. these two surfaces right there were too close to one another. Okay, so, move on to, let's move on to the next part. Uh, now what I want to do is isolate certain components. So I'm going to keep those three bodies, remove the rest, and that's what's left. So um, now I can start uh, adding tolerances and stuff like that. So that's that's a good sign. Um, the only thing is, this is FDM printing, so I need to be careful what can be printed. Um, this one is not going to have any trouble because I'm not going to need support, so I'm going to take care of that part first. It's going to be a quick and dirty uh, design uh, phase. Alright, so I've got this, and I can actually select the whole face. Uh, wait, no, that's that's too big of a fillet. I don't want to um, make, uh, make it so that the mechanism is just too... Small uh, for the for the other pieces to hook into it. For example, here if I put like a radius of 1.5, there's barely anything left right there for the puzzle to hold on to. So I'm gonna do 0 0.7. Same on that uh, those uh, those edges. And there's one final thing that I need. It's to add fillets to this section right there. This uh, this corner stock. All right. So this is our corner. That's done. Let's move on to the edge which is going to be second easiest part because the edge is also something I'm going to print without supports as is uh, now this is FDM so I need to be careful with the tolerances I'm not used to those as well as I am to those of, of uh, SLS puzzles what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to thicken the, the parts because I think uh, two millimeters is just not thick enough for FDM let's do three or four maybe actually three seems good sounds fine. Um, I'm gonna use this. I didn't change the mechanism, it's just that I made these things thicker uh, so, that I can, so that I can put more tolerances on them. Um, and I'm gonna put 0 0.8 millimeters. This is huge, but I think it should be... Uh, I mean, I can put as much as I want, so I can, I can do whatever I want. Um, Alright. Now, uh, okay, I hope you're not hearing the movie that my uh, housemate is playing right now because <laughs> there's like this big MGM logo or, or, or 20th, uh, 20th Century Fox or something. Um, okay, so, alright, now we're adding fillets everywhere and even on these parts. Those are the, the fillets that make it so that your, your part can actually corner cut. These are the most important ones. Um, the rest is less important, so I'm going to put them smaller uh, because I don't want uh, to put too much either. Uh, and now the rest is going to be 0 0.7 because it's just, uh, you know, um, outer to inner shell tolerances, sort of. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, there is something I forgot to mention. Sometimes SolidWorks has trouble understanding these edges right there because uh, it's the intersection of two spheres and it's kind of weird. So uh, what you can do is just move this face by 0 0.001 and it's not going to have any impact on the puzzle itself, so that is good. Uh, now, I'm going to add the fillets I was talking about. Uh, there, there, right there. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, there is, There are two left in here. I think that should do the trick. Now I'm just going to go back into my design because I just made a small mistake before all those fillets. Uh, I didn't put tolerances in there which is vital. Uh, I'm going to put 0 0.2 but the thing is you need more. Uh, I'm going to put 0 0.2 on this one and 0 0.2 on its counterparts because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just I don't want to change the shape of the parts too much. Uh, that's That looks good, okay. That's, uh, that's, that seems fine. Okay, so let's let's go with that. Now that's the the edge. Now I'm gonna do the the, the, the center. Sorry. Now obviously at this point uh, there's uh, there's going to be a lot of work. Uh, I need to start with the tolerances. As I did earlier, I'm gonna put 0 0.8 on this one, um, and then I need to. Okay, I'm also gonna put 0 0.8 on this one as well. So because this, uh, this shell right there, it's not necessary. I'm actually gonna put more. So 0 0.8 here and maybe, let's say 1.5 millimeters there. Okay. Also, I'm gonna add a little bit of um, a 
tolerance on this, the inner parts, because here you don't need contact, uh, technically, because this contact is already existing. Okay, uh, I think I'm even gonna add a 0.2 tolerance on these contacts here because, uh, well, it's, um, yeah, I, I, maybe 0.15 because it, it guarantees the functionality of the puzzle, but knowing FDM, there's gonna be some, some thicknesses uh, that I don't want there to be, so I'm gonna retract this by 0.15, and then I'm gonna put 0.2 again, where I said, you know, there was a counterpart that I needed to put tolerances on, and I'm gonna do this to all those faces, right there, there, and there. And obviously in the other direction, this one, no. Okay, so I've got my three counterparts. Okay, perfect. Now that that's done, I can start adding fillets uh, to the to the part. So obviously the, the corner cutting fillets are the most important ones. Uh, I'm gonna add them everywhere. Except, well, technically, that's okay. Here are the last ones that are important. These are the corner cutting fillets, and now I'm gonna put less on uh, the other uh, important fillets. I guess these ones are the important ones because they're the ones that are gonna do like some slight corner cutting when you're turning the centers. Um, so I'm adding those, and then the rest I'll use 0.7 because I don't need any more. Uh, technically, with FDM, I'm not even sure 0.7 is taken into account in the printing process, but whatever. Okay, so I've got those and those. And uh, for the top one, I'm going to do something aesthetic. Uh, still going to use 1.5, I think. Alright, so this is my center. Now, there's something that's important, and that's the fact that this uh, this center is not going to be the same as its, its um, opposed, well, mirrored center beneath it. So um, the mirrored center, I'm going to start with that one. Um, the only issue is, actually I'm not going to do it right now because there is one issue I can see with the, the previous center. It's the fact that this is, you know, as I said, FDM printed. So uh, this can't be printed at one go because there's going to be support and I want to avoid supports at all costs. So what I'm going to do this time to avoid supports is I'm going to create a sketch here and convert all of these entities right there. I'll explain why in a second. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, the shape that's right here. And what I'm gonna do is extrude that to make a surface. And once I have my surface, I'm gonna be able to cut one part of the center off from the other one. So, okay, so now I've got this. And I'm gonna create, again, a split function to uh, split the, the center in two parts. And that's really cool because I, I get to print it in two separate halves. This one, which is going to be separate from this one, which I can print in that orientation right there. So that helps me a lot. I just need to add a little bit of a tolerance. Uh, these parts are going to be, I mean, they're not going to move one uh, in regards to the other. So I'm just going to put some tolerances just to assemble them, but they're still going to be tightly knit together. So I'm only going to put 0.2 and only on one of the two sides. Now this part is complete because I'm just going to need two of those. Uh, this is the only part that's going to be different from uh, its mirrored part beneath it. So um, so yeah, let's, let's modify this. So this is going to be the part that receives the screw. I'm just going to add a little fillet for no particular reason, but it's uh, it's always nice to have rounded edges uh, to avoid lockups. Uh, you can never put uh, you can never put too many rounded edges. So this is going to be two point actually two point nine millimeters in diameter. I just want the screw to be well tightened in there. Uh, I think I can put more more than two point nine, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to put fifteen millimeters in depth. Uh, my screws are twelve mil millimeters anyway, so it's going to be deep enough. Um, although I might need a longer screw because the center is very long. So anyways, just I'm going to put 15 millimeters. it doesn't matter. And I'm going to add a chamfer to make the screw insertion easier, as I do with all of my designs. Alright, so this is what it's going to look like. And it's ready for printing. Now, I just need the next part and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, 
Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm going to cut off a part of this uh, the center, which is going to be the center cap, and I'm going to align it with this. Okay, so now I can make surface revolve to make it a planar surface, which I'm going to use to cut this um, this cap off. And I'm going to keep both bodies, obviously. And now I'm going to edit the cap and start making the shape that's going to protect the screw on the inside. So to do this, I'm offsetting the entities like the like the last time. Um, and I'm going to make a 1.5 millimeter offset. And then I'm going to select that and offset them again by one millimeter to get my uh, cap shape. Actually, the first one is not going to be 1.5, it's going to be 1.6. Um, that way I can assemble it inside the, the counter shape in the center. So uh, let's do two millimeters and put some slight fillets just to make sure the printer doesn't mess up my shape. Uh, let's put 0 0.7. Okay. Nice. So this is my center cap. And I need to do the counter shape on that one, on that piece. And I'm going to offset it by 1.5 and uh, cut this out by uh, 2.5 millimeters. That way my cap doesn't touch the bottom. And now I can trace the hole for my screw. Uh, my radius is 4.09. That's great because I needed a radius of 4 diameter of 8 to put the screw head in, so that is just perfect. I don't even know how lucky I uh, how, how I managed to get this lucky. It's, it's crazy. Okay, and now let's see just how long our screw is going to need to be. I'm not going to use any springs. I, I don't really care for springs. Uh, I'm just going to use, okay, so 3.5 millimeters for the for the screw to, let's, let's go for 3.7, for the screw to go all the way through, and it needs, it requires about 18 millimeters, so I'm gonna need an M3 times 25, I think, uh, which I don't have. Uh, that's too bad, I'm gonna need to buy them, but whatever. Okay, so now the center is ready for production, and I am gonna need, ah, uh, that's too bad, I'm gonna need to produce it uh, with this face on the bottom, because um, the issue is that I, um, I need this to be free of support, and unfortunately, that means there's going to be support here, and that's really, really a shame. Uh, that's something I would have liked to avoid at all costs, but uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. There is no real orientation for me to do this in, so it's going to need to be printed like that. So now let's see what we have. These are our final parts, so I'm going to need to split these apart. Uh, now the cent I mean, sorry, the edge and uh, the corner, they're going to be printed um, well they're gonna be printed on the on, on the right side let's say so uh, this is gonna be in the on the on the bottom this is what I mean so they're they're in the right position right now I'm, I just gonna I'm just needing to like uh, move them around a bit because uh, I don't want them to touch the centers or the corners if I move them here I think I'm, I'm still gonna be in contact with the spindle Okay, that's a bit too risky, I think, for FDM printing. So let's just uh, let's just move it a little bit more. Uh, anyways, my bed is more than large enough. Uh, it's going to be sufficient, so I'm going to move it all the way here. Okay, and now I'm going to move the corner as well, like that, so that it doesn't touch the centers. And I'm going to move the center out of the way as well because, well, there's just uh, I don't want it to be fused with the other parts. Okay, so this is my center right here. All right, now I've got the corner, which I'm gonna move. Again, this is real time, so uh, if you're impatient, don't hesitate to skip ahead. Uh, I have no problem with that, obviously, uh, because, well, honestly, I wouldn't watch this till the end anyways. I'd, I'd be bored as hell. Um, so 23.17, that's a strange value, but okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down by 23.17. Uh, okay. To align it with the base of the puzzle. 
So this is what it looks like. Everything is aligned properly. Beautiful. Okay, and um, the center right here, well, this sort of core is in the right place. I just need to move this up a bit. Uh, now I need to move it by 80 thirds, I think. No, two times 80 thirds. Which is, all right. I can't do equations in there? That's a shame, oh, yes I can. I'm gonna divide that by two. Actually, it was just 80 thirds. So um, 80 thirds on the y-axis, and I'm gonna move the center all the way here so it can be printed properly. And as you can see now, it's in the right position for printing, which is great, it's exactly what I wanted. And I just need to create another one of those parts and move it out of the way somewhere around here. And that will, that will be great for printing. Uh, and I wanted to make a copy, not just move it, so. All right. And now, I'm going to revolve these bodies around, and there you go. Um, come to think of it, I didn't really need to do this to create a copy. Uh, I have uh, another method which is going to be just fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a plane about, uh, I don't know, like here, something around, around there, 14 millimeters. And I'm going to create a symmetry and mirror these bodies right there. And it's going to be cleaner on the build plate, uh, I think. All right, so just one last adjustment. I'm going to move them slightly. Well, actually, no, that seems fine. I think it's fine. Maybe move this one a little bit to, to move it out of, out of the way. And this one uh, a little bit as well. All right, so I think this is gonna be fine on the build plate. Uh, agreed, there will be some support for that part. Uh, I'm gonna set the support to 45 degrees, I think, uh, that way. It's the only part that's printed like that. Uh, it should be fine, I guess. It should be fine. Okay, so uh, let's, let's hope you're Let's hope it's, uh, it's fine. So I'm going to print this now. I'm going to save it as an STL. Now I do want to show you something. Um, I am going to put some... Um, I'm going to put some, uh, some, some stickers on as well. I'm going to cut my own stickers now for the FDM puzzles. So, um, so I'm going to show you how to design stickers. Wait, that was a lot of triangles. That is so not necessary. I think I put way too many. Uh, what are my options? It's extremely fine. Um, yeah, you know what? Whatever. The the file still exported itself properly, so it's fine. Okay, so now let's cancel all of the the body move functions and save the the puzzle. So now my file is how it's gonna be when it's saved. Uh, I'm not gonna save the sticker pattern because well, it can be made in just a few clicks. And I'm only going to need to do it once anyway, so I, I tend to prefer saving the puzzle as it was before creating the stickers. What I'm doing for the stickers is I'm creating a sketch on each of the face and converting the entities. So here these lines now exist, they were just the lines of the, the accessible space of the part. So here I'm creating another sketch on this plane and I'm going to select these two faces and convert. Now technically I can do better than what I just did. Um, I can offset directly. Uh, now I'm going to offset it by 0.3. That way there's enough space for me to put stickers on. Let's say 0.5, maybe it's going to look slightly better. And I'm going to do that on every single part. As you can see, these are where the stickers are going to go. And I'm even going to add the fillets right now. Uh, 1.5 millimeter. Uh, actually, I'm going to add fillets. So for, for um, acute angles, I'm going to use one millimeter. So there are uh, a total of seven acute angles on this one. Actually, I'm going to use 1.5 because this is a big puzzle. Nah, I want to look better. And now for the bigger, uh, the bigger corners, the bigger, sorry, angles, these four, I'm going to use three millimeter fillets because they look better. So this is what my stickers are going to look like. Now I'm going to do this on every single type of sticker. So uh, offset this face by 0.5, offset this one by 0.5. Now these are only 
uh, straight angles, like uh, 90 degree angles. So I'm going to use right angles is what I meant. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to use two millimeters because it looked relatively good. This is completely arbitrary. Um, and now that this is done, I'm going to remove everything that exists right here. Remove, not keep. Delete bodies. Okay, and what's left are my sticker sketches. And now I'm going to uh, extrude those and make it a part. Uh, same for the other sketch. Okay, now this is what we have. Now the thing is, obviously I didn't do every single sticker. Uh, sticker. I only did the unique ones, so now I'm going to copy paste them and do some symmetries. So uh, I've got the first symmetry, which is this one. I'm going to mirror that part right there. And I've got my bottom plane here that I'm going to use to mirror the three top uh, stickers. And now around this axis, I'm going to revolve the last ones to get uh, the right uh, quantity of top face stickers. Beautiful. Now that that's done, uh, I need to create an axis, let's say this one. Uh, actually, I don't need to create an axis, I can just do a circular pattern around this edge. Uh, not a circular pattern, rather a move copy, because I don't want to copy anything. Okay, and now I'm going to select those bodies and turn them 90 degrees to put them on the same level, negative 90, on the same level as this face right here. And then I'm going to move these out of the way slightly. Uh, these are going to be my DXF files. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to do two types of DXF files. So now I'm going to create a drawing from the part. And what you want to do is a custom sheet size of, well, actually, you can... Sorry, I'm going to start that again because <laughs> that was catastrophic. So make drawing from part. Select A4 and now click custom sheet size because it's going to give you the right width and height, but it's not going to give you like the, the background with the information here and everything. Uh, you're going to get a clean white sheet and you're going to put the current view, which is the top view, and uh, use a custom scale of one. This is going to be the, the real size compared to a, an A4 sheet of paper. Now that that's done, what I'm going to do is something quite subtle. I'm going to actually put like the two two sketch, I mean the sketch on the left and the puzzle on the right, that way it's easier for me to work. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm going to delete these bodies right there and these ones, but I'm going to undo the first body delete. This is what I got. Um, now what I can do to make it take up less space on the printer is on the on the sticker cutter, the plotter, is to turn this 60 degrees and put it horizontal, as you can see. And now I go back in there, and as you can see, there's only one left because I put the current view, so it sees only. Well, there's only what it sees in the in the design software and on the on the right side of my screen. Now I'm gonna put uh, these uh, these dimensions just to be sure that I'm on on the right scale, and I'm gonna save this. Let's let's put it on the top left. I don't know. That way it's printed in the right place on the... I don't know how my sticker plotter works, I haven't received it, so I'm filming this before I'm receiving the plotter. And I'm going to save this as a DXF file. This is what most plotters use, and my uh, Silhouette plotter is uh, going to use this. So I'm saving this. Now I'm going to undo this, uh, the other body suppression uh, step that I made, and I'm going to redo the same steps with this one. Put it here and create a dimension, let's say this one, because that's the only actual um, dimension that you can measure. Otherwise, you, you're going to select the wrong thing, like this point here, instead of selecting the maximum. So um, let's do the smart dimension here. I have more space for it. Damn it. Okay, so now this is going to be for scale, uh, because I don't have a banana. So um, now save as. And again, DXF and triangular domino two because that's the other face. And save now, perfect. And I'm gonna quit without saving. And this too, because we have all the files that we need in our uh, in our um, 
folder, uh, which is right there, somewhere in there. Okay, right there. We've got the, the triangular face right here, the square face, the STL files. So we've got everything. And all that we need to do now is open Cura and, um, you know, split, uh, splice the splice the, the STL file. So, uh, so let's do this. Let's, uh, let's do this real quick so that you can see how I do it. Um, all right. Now obviously it's not in the right orientation. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it by 90 degrees and it looks like it fits just perfectly on the build plate, which is nice. And I'm gonna use pet G with supports. Uh, just gonna check the supports everywhere, overhang angle 60. We can, oh, you can see I had 50. If I put 40, there's it's too much. It's it's uh it's too little, sorry, because there's gonna be support on the red parts over there. 50, I guess it's still a problem. 60, on the other hand, starting to be okay. And 70 should be well, 65 should be fine, I think. I do want to make sure that the whole thing works. There is one thing that kind of bothers me here. Uh, it's the fact that there's support on the inside of those parts, and that is not good. So I'm gonna risk the 75 degrees. And that means there won't be any supports here. I'm still gonna try it out. There will be supports here, so that's good. Uh, the supports here might not suffice. Worst case scenario, I'll reprint the only Part that might be a problem which is this uh, this part here the center the only thing that kind of antagonizes me is the fact that here they're the the software is going to try to put support inside uh, my part uh, inside the spindle which is absolutely not necessary and it's something I'd like to avoid at all costs um, I think instead of doing that uh, I'm gonna not take the risk and reopen my my triangular domino file and move the bodies again, except this time I'm, whoops, I'm gonna remove this one and I'm gonna just print the whole thing supportless and then print this piece separately because otherwise it's gonna be catastrophic. So I'm gonna delete this, save as, save as this STL that I had earlier. Okay. Hopefully I don't need to overwrite it. Nice. And then I'm gonna unsuppress, and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna reuse that body delete keep thing function and do it, do keep instead of delete. So that way I can just save it as directly and, um, and call it whatever center something. Okay, and now I can just quit without saving. Uh, yep. And now open Cura again, delete this file and put the proper file in there. And this time I'm gonna use PETG support list because I don't need support. Now I can flip it 90 degrees. It's already well placed on the build plates and now I guess uh, I can splice it, slice it and um, and get it printed. So so yeah, let's let's do this. Save to file, as G code, and, uh, and then we're good. That's, that's gonna be a hell of a fun ride. I think uh, these, uh, these A to Z videos are going to be really fun. So yeah, save this and let's go print it. So these are the parts straight out of the printer because I didn't use support. Uh, I only used some on this one, but I removed it. It was in there. Uh, okay, so let's let's begin the assembly. Uh, I made these parts so that they would fit in there. I hope they're gonna fit nicely. Uh, I feel like this one fits in just perfectly. There's still a bit of a gap, but I'm gonna have to, to close it. Okay, nice, wonderful. Now there's this one, same principle. Oh, this one fits in much nicer. 
All right, so I've got these two, and I'm gonna have to screw them together, but first I'm going to assemble the sides right there. Ooh, that feels like it's gonna spin well. It's gonna spin really well. Uh, I've got this one right here, and these two corners. Nice. Okay, plus it's, it seems relatively tight, so that's nice. I use my usual FDM tolerances. Uh, I don't really um, design for FDM often, but I have in the past, so I, I know what to expect. The only thing I haven't done are puzzles with big shells, and uh, I, I mean multiple shells, and uh, and therefore it's it's not my uh, my domain of expertise. But I will make some nice progress soon because I'm going to print a lot of more complex puzzles. Uh, puzzles really made for SLS, but um, okay, let's let's screw this in. So the chamfer seems to be doing its job. Uh, almost there. Nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. And the cap. Oh, nice. It's, it fits perfectly in there. There's no issues with this print whatsoever. This spins wonderfully well. And I'm glad that it does because I'm, I'm using a, a shells mechanism, well, a circular mechanism, which is uh, more complex. So I'm, I'm glad that it's working out. Let's see uh, if my, uh, my silicon uh, lubricant works well with this puzzle, but honestly, for now, it spins really nicely. Uh, let's, let's try this. Alright. Yeah, it definitely spins nicely. Ah, that is cool. Also, um, soon I'm probably going to be buying a new camera because I'm going to need another one for the time lapses. I'm probably going to buy a second printer as well. Um, which means that I will probably have 60 FPS. So this is nice. Uh, this is the, the good news of the, of the week or the month, whatever. So, uh, yeah, okay, this puzzle is definitely the bomb. It, it is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the stickers for it, along with the stickers for the the, the upcoming puzzles. So uh, I hopefully I won't spoil anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm using the silhouette cutter. I just inserted the, the vinyl sheets. Uh, I just have to pick my material, so I'm just going to choose the Grex Puzzles option because it's a puzzle for me and press send and uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna end badly because uh, every time I do something for the first time it mostly ends badly so uh, let's let's just check this out So we're done and this is what it looks like. So there's just one thing I'm disappointed about and one thing that I'm really happy about. The thing I'm disappointed about is somewhere on these stickers, uh, like here, there, there, um, sometimes on other faces like this one, you can see here there are some reflections. Uh, the thing is there are some tiny bits and pieces of contaminations and uh, it, it shows on the stickers like there's uh, bumps and stuff like that, for example here. And uh, that's really too bad, but it's because of the, you know, FDM post-processing. And since I didn't do any on those parts, well, there are still some bumps. So, um, yeah, that's barely nothing. But the thing I'm happy about is that the stickers, they hold really well onto these parts. Uh, I, I'm used to working with SLS puzzles, and that's the one thing that's, uh, that's disappointing about SLS puzzles. It's that it's very hard to get the stickers to, to hold on tight to the, to the faces because uh, they are, well, it's basically like adding a sticker to flour. Uh, you're just stickering a powder, and it's, it's completely pointless. Um, with SLS, there's still a little bit of powder left, uh, left over, so it's, it's like stickering powder, it's, it's difficult. So you have to melt the stickers on. Here, you don't have to do anything, they stick on really well. So, uh, yeah, it's a really, really fun, uh, fun little puzzle. It's uh, quite easy, it spins very well. Let's, uh, let's scramble it and, uh, and solve it real quick. That's nice, I like it. The overall result is okay, uh, it's still, um, it locks up a lot, but that's just, uh, you know, a detail, so, uh, 
So yeah, let's try to solve this. So I've got green orange here. If I do this, I'm gonna have green and orange there. Okay, I need to do this white uh, section here. So there's gonna be red, uh, which means I need to pair up the reds with the other reds, like this one and this one. Now I've got the top face, the, sorry, that top face right there that's solved. I just need to solve the bottom face and here there's an algorithm I absolutely hate and um, it's, it's quite complicated. So let's just see, first I have to turn those two around. So I'm just gonna do my alg to see um, and try to remember just where it was that I, uh, hmm, wait. I don't remember exactly what my alg does, which is why it's, uh, it's a bit complicated. So, okay, let's do this. Okay, it does lock up quite a lot. Okay, so as you can see, now I have these three that are permutated. Earlier, I just had to do this. So this one turns out that it didn't move because it had to, it had to go there. So uh, what happened is these two got switched. So now I know what the algorithm does. So I'm gonna have to do it again this time. So once here, okay. Let's try that that again. Okay, it locks up a bit, but it's fine. Okay, and. Right there. Okay, now I only have to do it one more time, and since I know that it's uh, it's reverses, it flips the 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 two edges opposite to the face that I'm turning. I'm gonna do it once more here on that side. All right, just like that. This, like that. And like this, and normally that should do the trick. And it seems like I made a mistake. What just happened? Ah, uh, I didn't know that. It actually flipped these two, not these two. That was my mistake. So I'm gonna do that over again. And here we go. It's solved. If it wants to click it, it plays. This this face here just clicks a lot. Anyways, um, this is solved. It's, it's actually quite easy. Uh, you can use that algorithm if you own one of my little keychain, um, you know, uh, dominoes, well, triangular dominoes as well, but without the center. Uh, it works as well. Um, I still have plenty of those, by the way. If anyone wants to buy some, it's, it's 20 bucks. I'm just shipping them out basically anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, fun fun 3D prints. I like this puzzle. It didn't cost me much because it's FDM printed, so it's, uh, it's a nice addition to my collection for not a big investment, so that's, that's pretty cool. I, I like the fact that I have one, well, technically I have three printers now, not one. Um, so yeah, hopefully you'll see a lot more videos coming from me. Uh, in the meantime, please feel free to, to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see some more videos. Uh, I'm releasing another one like this with a much more complex puzzle um, next uh, week or the week after. Uh, I'm basically skipping a great gap because between this and the next puzzle it's going to be a, a very big difference in, in complexity. So hopefully it's, it won't be a catastrophe. <laughs> Alright, see you guys next week. Thank you.